My first memory, as I opened my eyes, was of bright lights. My next was of two large objects staring at me, which I later learned were my mum and dad. As I looked at them, a warm feeling engulfed my whole body. I could hear jumbled sounds in my brain. I didn't understand the sounds, except they were happy sounds. They were sounds that made me feel good. I grew quickly, both physically and mentally, especially mentally. It wasn't long before I could understand most of what my parents were trying to tell me. Actually, it was more like I felt what they wanted to tell me rather than understood the strange sounds they made. My parents were beautiful. They were tall, cheerful, and bright. I was ashamed of myself because I was a light grey colour. No other colour but grey. I had two sisters my age. They too were grey. I could feel their shame at their lack of colour. Just as I felt shame. We all wanted to be bright and cheerful like mum and dad. We certainly didn't want to be grey. During the day, Mum would stay with us and Dad would leave us for a while. When he returned, it was always with some wonderful food. He would give the food to Mum, then just stand there watching as Mum fed us. I could feel his pride as he watched us. How could he be proud of us? We were ugly. We were grey. We weren't fun colours and wonderful to look at. We were grey. Every day was the same. Dad would leave, and we would play with Mum. Dad would return, and we would feast. There was one thing that started to change. As the days went by, my sisters and I began to connect the sound our parents made with the emotions we felt come from them. Slowly, we were learning to speak. Soon after this, we could even talk to each other in a limited way. This made playing with mum and each other even more fun. One day, I asked my mum, Where does dad go? She looked at me, then at my sisters, and smiled. He hunts for our food. He flies until he finds food, then brings it to us. She must have read our minds because she added, Someday, you will understand what flies means. Just not today. Flies. It was such a mysterious word. Flies. It sounded like fun. We sensed that mum was not going to explain this mysterious new word. Flies. So we waited till dad got home and asked him. He looked at mum and nodded. You will learn soon enough. Be patient, he told us. Oh no, he didn't. He couldn't have made this word any more mysterious if he tried. That's not right, I cried out. I could feel that my sisters felt the same way. We have to know all about flies. We just have to. Dad and Mum both laughed. You will learn soon enough. Just not today, he replied. I stomped off, my sisters trailing behind me. This wasn't right. You don't start something and not finish. We walked to a clearing and sat down. We didn't talk. We didn't need to because we were bubbling over with emotions and felt each other's curiosity. We were all enamored with flies. Flies. What was this mysterious thing? Was flies a wonderful place? What was flies? My sisters and I spent days discussing all of the mysterious things flies could be. Every day, Mom and Dad would take us on long walks through the forest. They would point out what to avoid, like prickly trees. They were big trees with lots of branches that reached the ground. Every branch had big, long, spike-like things growing out of them. Dad said 
If we got scratched by one of these spikes, we would itch for hours. They also showed us where some good things were, like streams we could drink out of. They showed us the lake. There, we learned to swim. It was on one of these walks that I felt my parents stiffen with concern. It wasn't fear they felt. I don't think they feared anything. It was more a combination of concern for us mixed with curiosity. We were walking through tall grass, so my sisters and I weren't tall enough yet to see what they saw. And I could hear some strange voices in my head. I didn't understand a word of it, but I could feel a new emotion coming from the voices. I later learned that the emotion in the voices was fear. Mum gently moved us behind her as she placed herself between us and where the voices were coming from. Mum and Dad then proceeded to slowly move toward the voices. Much as my sisters and I tried to peek around Mum to see what was causing the voices, Mum kept blocking our view. We finally came to a clearing where the grass was short and Mum and Dad stopped and just stood there. I could hear four different voices. Each voice carried a different emotion. There was one voice that stood out. It was a voice that was... That was... That was like nothing I had experienced. How can a voice be like a warm light? But that's how it sounded and felt. I concentrated on that one voice and slowly started reading the emotions in the voice. It was filled with amazement and excitement. A good excitement. There was also a subtle sadness in the emotions. But the sadness was overpowered by the beauty it resonated with a warm, well-lit, well, beauty. It took a lot of manoeuvring, but my sisters and I were finally able to peek around Mum. Sitting on the ground were four figures, the likes of which I'd never before seen. They were small, maybe our size. Their bodies were covered in stuff. One had red stuff, one black, one silver, and one green. I concentrated on the one in the red stuff because that was where I was getting all the warm and wonderful emotions. The more I watched it, the more I felt warm and secure. Finally, it looked at me, and I was awash with emotions I had never felt before. Our eyes locked onto each other's and suddenly it became clear to me. This thing was mine and I was its. I'd found my ultimate playmate. I'd found my ultimate friend. I'd found the missing part of myself that I didn't even know was missing. If I was the evening, it was my morning. I knew that I could never be separated from it. I knew that I would die for it. The most wonderful thing of all, I knew it felt the same way about me. I couldn't resist the emotions. I ran from behind my mum to my it. Suddenly, the figure in silver stuff jumped up and placed itself between me and my, my soulmate. Just as quickly, my dad brushed me out of the way and screamed at the figure. I could feel the silver one shiver, and I felt its fear because dad was at least ten times its size. But it didn't move. It stood its ground. I felt emotions coming from the silver it. Much as it feared my dad, it wanted to protect the red it. I could tell my dad also read the silver it's emotions because he gently brushed the silver it aside. That was all I needed. I rushed forward and put my head in the red it's lap. The contact with the red it sent a shock through me. I could see strange visions through a light fog. I saw an older red it's face being cradled by the younger red it. Tears came down the younger Reddit's cheeks. She was sad. The older it smiled and then passed on. Her essence was gone. No emotions. No thoughts. No breath. Next, I saw my Reddit in a big lake. She was screaming something over and over again. The black it and the silver it were screaming with her. Interwoven through this vision was one constant emotion. Pain. Or maybe it was sadness. 
it was if my red it was sad over the loss of the older red one and something in the water that she was screaming for. My red it was broken. She wasn't whole. My vision changed to just a few moments ago when my red it first saw me. I saw myself through her eyes. I saw I had a glow, a light that surrounded me. That light started to move toward my reddit until we were both covered in the most brilliant light. The light pulsated with energy around us. It was a connection between just the two of us. After a few moments, my dad told me to get up. I was afraid he was going to separate me from my reddit. My, my partner. So I stayed seated beside my partner. My dad told me again, but I didn't move. He then looked at mum, then back at me. He then extended his long arm and forced my partner and I to stand. He then gently moved us toward where my mum and sisters were standing. The silver it started talking to the green it in a strange language. But the silver it's emotions were clear. It did not like what was happening. I had no intention of letting my partner go with us. Then I heard my reddit really speak. It was as if all the beautiful sounds in the world had joined and moulded themselves into one sound. One voice. Her voice. Yes, I knew now my partner was a she. How I knew? I don't know. I just knew. When she spoke... I received mental images of her message. She was telling her fellow it's that everything was all right, that she was going with us. She told them she would be safe with us and for them not to worry. She said some other things that I didn't quite understand, but her emotions sang out her message. She was going with us. At the end, she hugged the other three its and then stood by my side. It was obvious they were friends. So I made up my mind they were now my friends. My partner's friends were my friends. I locked eyes with the silver it and went down on one knee and bowed my head to it. This was how we showed others our respect. I respected the silver it because he had tried to protect my partner when he thought she was in danger. I could still feel his doubt about her going with me, but it was done objecting. It was resigned to the fact that my partner was coming with me. My dad then bowed to the green it and then herded us back toward home. My partner walked beside me. While we walked on two legs and two arms, she walked on two legs, her arms swinging free at her side. She continually talked as we headed away from the clearing. I could feel her curiosity as I am sure she felt mine. Many of our questions were the same. Where did we come from? What type of beings were we? What did we like to do? One word, one thought kept coming from my partner. Why didn't we fly back to where we were going? I got a mental picture from her of wind in my face and clouds racing by. I was puzzled by this. Why did she have these thoughts? What did they mean? My partner suddenly stopped walking and just stared at me as if she were trying to understand something. When she stopped walking, so did my family. They all turned to look at her. She then stood beside me and gently extended my second set of arms, which were attached slightly behind my shoulders. By extending these, she exposed the membranes that spread from my arms to about half of my body. Wings, she said. I didn't understand what she meant. Then I got a mental picture from her of me flapping my second set of arms like a bird and soaring high in the sky. She then flashed me another mental image of wind in my face and floating through clouds. I got it. She thought we were birds? Was she stupid? We weren't birds. 
Birds were tiny little things with beautiful voices. I knew better. I could feel all of the thoughts racing through my partner's mind. No, she wasn't stupid. I looked to my parents and saw they were greatly annoyed. Was it because we stopped? Was it because... And then it came to me. They were annoyed because my partner was touching on something they didn't want my sisters and me to know yet. What is she saying? I asked my parents. What aren't you telling us? Your time hasn't come. You are not old enough yet, replied mum. When you are older, bigger and stronger, you will learn to fly. There, it was again. That mysterious, wonderful word, fly. What did it mean? What did it have to do with what my partner was trying to ask me? I looked at mum, then to dad, and then to my sisters. I could feel they felt the same way I did. So we all sat down and just stared at mum and dad. My partner got the idea and sat down next to me. Mum looked at dad and he just shrugged his shoulders. As you know, mum began, we are able to read others' emotions. Well, when you reach adulthood, you will be able to do something else as well. You will be able to fly. We didn't want to tell you about this until you were close to adulthood. Father, she said as she turned to Dad. Dad extended his second set of arms and slowly and majestically swung them up and down. I could feel the air move as he swung his arms faster and faster. To my surprise, Dad slowly began to lift himself into the air. Soon, he was maybe 15 feet off the ground. Then he turned and started moving forward in the air. Your dad is now flying, Mum said. I watched as Dad soared like a bird. So this was flying and someday we would be able to fly? I looked to Mum and she nodded. We didn't want to tell you yet because we thought to keep you safe. There have been instances where young ones have fallen to their deaths off of cliffs because they tried to fly too soon. We also knew you would pester us to death about trying to fly once you learned about it. My partner had got into her feet and was jumping up and down, clapping her hands and squealing with happiness. I could feel that she thought flying was a wonderful thing. She wasn't stupid after all. She knew things I didn't even know. Maybe she was a wise one, like the stories of old. I wonder. I stood up and slowly turned my partner around and around, inspecting every square inch of her. No, she didn't have a second set of arms, so she would never fly. My partner came to me and placed a hand on each side of my face. No, she said, but I can fly on your back. While I didn't understand her words, I got a clear picture of their meaning. I saw a vision of a bigger me with my partner firmly attached to my back with sort type of strappings. We were flying high in the sky looking down on the fields below. I was the flyer and she was my rider and yet we were as one. What I felt, she felt. What I saw, she saw. We were one. Dad flew back to us and softly landed a few feet away. As soon as he touched ground, my partner ran up to him and hugged his leg. You all are wonderful. More than anything I could ever have imagined. While we didn't quite understand the words, the emotions were clear. She loved us, especially me. Dad went flying while we walked home. Mum said he had gone hunting so we had food for dinner. My partner had one hand on my shoulder and constantly talked as we walked. I loved the sound of her voice. It was clear and full of hope and excitement. Gone was the pain and sadness I'd previously felt in her. She now felt whole. Even though I was grey, even though I was ugly, she loved me. We were one. 
I would be her wings and she would be my rider. Dad beat us home and I could see we were having deer for dinner. My mouth watered for I loved deer more than anything else. We had only had deer twice before, so maybe Dad thought this was a special occasion. It was a large deer, larger than the other two I had seen. Then it dawned on me that we would need a larger deer because we had an extra mouth to feed. There was a big clearing where we usually ate. Dad beat us there and already had the deer skinned, portioned and ready to feast on. My sisters wasted no time in grabbing half a leg each and started tearing into the feast. I walked my partner over to two half legs that were to be ours. I nudged half a leg toward her. I think she got the idea but just shook her head from side to side. I flashed her a mental picture of her tearing the juicy part off the meat, off the bone and eating it. Again, she shook her head, no. My partner took a big stuffed lump off her back that she was wearing. She sat it down on the ground and opened it up. I moved beside her and sniffed the lump. It smelled like her and yet there were other odours as well. You eat, she said as she flashed me a vision of me eating a leg. And I'll eat my food. She then opened a bag and put out something and pretended to eat whatever it was she was holding. Go on, she said, as she pushed me toward the deer. She had already proven she knew things I didn't, so I grabbed my portion of the deer and brought it back so I could eat next to her. I watched as she took a bite of whatever it was she had, then she smiled at me. Satisfied she was all right, I ate my portion of the deer. While we were anything but quiet, my partner ate in silence. We picked and clawed the meat off the bones of the deer. We clucked and called and loudly gulped down huge portions of meat. While she was very clean with what she ate, we were a bloody mess. I don't know why, but it always seemed that the messier the food, the better it tasted. When we were done eating, my sisters and I picked up the remains of the deer and took them a little bit away from the clearing where we had previously dug a big hole in the ground. We deposited the remains in the hole and went back to get more remains. My partner must have understood what we were doing because she helped us carry the remains to the hole on the next three trips. After all the remains were gone, I nudged my partner away from the clearing. Mum then went to the edge of the clearing and cleansed the clearing of everything we didn't get. My partner jumped back when she saw the fire come out of my mum's mouth. It frightened her, yet she was entranced by it. She just stood there and watched as mum scorched the clearing of all traces of our feast. Once done, mum and dad led us away from the clearing and marched us down to a stream. Upon seeing the stream, My sisters ran forward and jumped in. They splashed around for a bit before submerging their heads in the water. When they emerged from the water, there was not a trace of blood left on their previously bloody faces. I then lowered my hands into the water and moved them around to get the blood off of them. My partner got the idea because she washed her hands and face in the water as well. Upon seeing that, I jumped in the stream and took my bath. Normally, we went to sleep after taking our baths, but not tonight. When we returned home, my sisters and I were charged up. It was like there was an energy in the air. Everyone's thoughts and emotions were in overdrive. We unintentionally bombarded each other with every question and emotion possible. Even my partner's curiosity flooded my senses. Finally, mum and dad sat down and we followed their lead. You seem to be the best at communicating with the it, Dad said to me. We have questions for it, and I can feel it has questions for us. Let us see how much you two can understand each other, and maybe we can figure out what we are to do with this it. First, we are aware of the beings. They call themselves humans. They live in a different part of the land a part we do not go. Occasionally, we will encounter a human, and when we do, 
we and the human tend to ignore each other. As it is our guest, let us see if you can find out what this curiosity is of your it that is pounding in our heads. I carefully imitated what my partner had done with me earlier. I put one hand on each side of her head, careful not to cut or scratch her with my sharp claws. I then concentrated on her emotions, and hopefully they would turn into thoughts. They were many, and all jumbled together. I locked eyes with her and tried to sort them out. The most overpowering emotion was the love she felt for me and how she wanted to be with me forever. I gently nudged this emotion aside and concentrated on other emotions. Finally, a few thoughts became clear. She wants to know who we are and Dad cut me off. One question at a time. <laughs> we are us. Who else would we be? Dad laughed. We have been here as long as any of us can remember. I grimaced. How was I to convey that to my partner? I decided to just go on to her next thought. She wants to know if she can stay here with us. Forever. I looked to dad and mum as I said this. This was something I needed to know as well. It was then that I knew that if she couldn't stay, I would go with her. Much as I loved my parents and sisters, I could never leave my partner. Dad looked at mum quizzically and she just shook her head. Your human is a young one. She needs to be with her humans until she becomes an adult, mum said. Just as you must stay with us until you become an adult and learn enough to be on your own. Mum finished in a forceful tone that I'd never heard before. But, was all I got out, we have stories, legends, that tell us of a time when a human bonded with one of us. It was an unbreakable bond that lasted till death. It appears from everything you two have emotionally broadcast that you and this human have bonded. Mum then looked at Dad and he nodded. She must complete her training as a human, just as you must complete yours. She may stay with us whenever her training and elders permit it. We will not keep you apart once the two of you are of age. Her look stopped me before I could object. We don't even know how to feed her, what she eats, what to do if she hurts herself. She might die simply because we nor she know how to care for her. I shuddered at those words. While I hated everything mum just told me, there was a simple truth behind them. No, I would not be the cause of anything that might cause my partner pain. Because I still held my partner's face in my hands, she must have understood some of what mum was saying, or at least my feelings about it. She smiled, and suddenly I got a vision of her being with other humans during the day and being with us at night, every night. I could feel her hesitation at being separated, but I could also feel she agreed with mum. This made me feel a little better. I conveyed this vision to my parents, and they nodded their approval. My partner stood up, pointed to herself, and said, Megan! It was obvious we didn't understand. She came and placed my face in her hands and said, My name is Megan. She could tell we still didn't understand. She picked up a rock and said, Rock. Then she touched a tree and said, Tree. Then she placed her hand on her chest and said, Megan. She is telling us she is called Megan, I said. These humans cannot emote like we do. This was what we called our mental and emotional communication. So they must call themselves something so others will know who they are. Even as I said this, I realized how strange this was to us. Whenever we emoted or broadcast a thought or emotion or even spoke a word, they carried a certain pattern which we could easily identify with the sender. We had no need of words that identified us. With my hand still on her face, 
I picked up another thought and a very dark emotion. For only the briefest of moments, she broadcast a vision of the two of us flying over a group of humans. In my partner's hand was something that threw small lightning bolts at the humans below. These bolts were killing the humans below. There was a stream of red flowing from the humans. Just as quickly, her vision stopped. I shielded the vision from my family. My parents might stop me from being with my partner if they knew of my partner's dark vision. One thing became clear. My partner was still broken. Something deep within her was not yet whole. While I did not know the cause of her dark vision, I did know that my mission was to help heal my partner. I knew that there was also an overwhelming, bright, beautiful and good side to her. I needed to try to be the missing piece of my broken reddit. My, my, Megan. I also knew I would tear down the heavens and earth if needed to protect my Megan. This is the first recording for, well, not the first recording, but the first video for the first recording of Bonded. Yay! This is my second round during the second recording, um, as I didn't exactly have it. It was kind of like a rough draft um, to find out what I need to fix up for the actual recording, so... Yeah, um, so I just need to read through my notes, um, yeah. Okay, so because it's still in the um, drafting phases, it might, it still might not be as great, but, you know, <laughs> well, we'll see how it goes. Okay, let's get started. My first memory. He looked at mum and nodded. You will learn soon enough. Be patient, he told us. Oh no, he didn't! He couldn't have made this word even any more mysterious if he tried. That's not right, I cried out. I could feel that my sisters felt the same way. We have to know all about flies. We just have to! Dad and mine both laughed. <laughs> you will learn soon enough. Just not today, he replied. Mysterious, my sisters and I spent days discussing all of the mysterious things flies could be. And that was the first page of Funded, recorded and videoed. Ciao. Hi. So this is the third round of Funded. Number two recordings. Fingers crossed none of my housemates are home. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's not going to be great in the background. Okay. My first memory as I opened my eyes was of bright light. My next was of two large objects staring at me, which I later learned were my mum and dad. Uh, uh. <laughs> okay, hang on a moment. <laughs> I was doing well, and then all of a sudden, my throat, it just decided not to work. If you're wondering why I'm drinking, this is green tea and honey. 
I find it helps a lot with um, keeping my voice and throat moist and ready and able for these voice workouts, so to speak. My first memory as I opened my eyes was a bright light. <laughs> yeah, I'm to redo it again. <laughs> my first memory as I opened my eyes was a bright light. Okay. Body. I could hear jumbled sounds in my brain. I didn't understand the sounds, except they were happy sounds. They were sounds that made me feel good. I grew quickly. It's a wonderful place. What's flies? What was flies? My sisters and I spent days discussing all of the mysterious things flies could be. Yeah, I stumbled and stuttered over my words. <laughs> As you do. As you do. Okay, woo! <laughs> Hope you enjoyed watching. <laughs> My dad then bowed to the green it and then herded us back toward home. My partner walked beside me. While we walked on two legs and two arms, she walked on two legs, her arms swinging free at her side. She continually talked as we headed away from the clearing. I could feel her curiosity as I am sure she felt mine. Many of our questions were the same. Where did we come from? What type of beings were we? What did we like to do? One word, one thought, kept coming through my partner. Why didn't we fly back to where we were going? I got a mental picture from her of wind in my face and clouds racing by. I was puzzled by this. Why did she have these thoughts? What did they mean? My dad, the that. <laughs> My dad, then I, I was puzzled by this. Why did she have these thoughts? What did they mean? Of her, of wind in my face and clouds racing by. I was puzzled by this. What did she have these thoughts? What did they? While well, we walked on two legs and two arms, she walked on two legs, her arms swinging free at her side. She continually talked as we headed away from the clearing. I could feel her curiosity as I am sure she felt mine. Many of our questions were the same. My partner suddenly stopped walking and just stared at me as if she was trying to tell, understand something. Suddenly stopped walking and just stared at me as if she was trying to understand something. When she stopped from my arms to about half my body.
to the membranes that spread from my arms to about half of my body. From my arms to about half of my body. My partner suddenly stopped walking and just stared at me as if she was trying to understand something. When she stopped walking, so did my family. They all that spread from my arms to about half of my body. My partner suddenly stopped walking and just stared at me as if she wasn't stupid. Wings? She stupid? We weren't birds. Birds were tiny little things with beautiful voices. I knew better. I could feel I looked to my parents and saw they were greatly annoyed. Was it because we stopped? Was it because... And then it came to me. They were annoyed because my partner was touching on something they didn't want my sisters and me to know yet. What is she saying? I asked. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> gotta love therps. What is she saying? I looked to my parents and saw they were gr You will learn to fly. Your time hasn't come yet. Your time hasn't come. 
You are not old enough yet. Why? What did it mean? What did it have to do with what my partner was trying to ask me? I looked at mum, then to dad. Her look stopped me from before I could object. Her look stopped me before I could object. We don't even know how to feed her, what she eats, what to do if she hurts herself. She might die simply because we, nor she, know how to care for her. Mum looked then the la la. <laughs> oh my gosh. I would care for her. Every branch had long, big, like, spike like things growing out of them. Dad said if we got scratched by one of these spikes. But I could feel a new emotion coming from the voices. I later learned that that emotion in their voices was fear. Mom gently moved us behind her as she placed between herself between us and where the voices were coming from. Mum and Dad then proceeded to slowly move toward the voices. Sitting on the ground were four figures, the likes which I had never before seen. My parent got the, my partner got the idea and sat down next to me. We didn't want to tell you yet because we thought to keep you safe. There have been instances where young ones have fallen through their deaths of cliffs because they tried to fly too soon. We also know you would pester us to death about trying to fly once you learned about it. My partner had gone to her feet and was jumping up and down, clapping her hands and squealing with happiness. I could feel that she thought flying was a wonderful thing. She wasn't stupid at all. She wasn't stupid after all. She knew things I didn't even know. Maybe she was a wise fly. My partner came to me and placed a hand on each side of my face. No, she said, but I can fly in your back. No, but I can fly in your back. While I didn't understand her words, I got a clear picture of their meaning. I saw a vision of a bigger me with my partner firmly attached to my back with sort of t sort type of strappings. We'll she wants to know who we are and dad cut me off. One question at a time. We are us. Who else would we be? <laughs> dad laughed. I got a vision of her being with her other humans. Something deep within her is what her was not yet whole. 